Affiliate marketing. Seems like nearly everyone is making money on it these days. From social media influencers, to passionate bloggers, to websites of major media companies like CBS, The New York Times, Forbes.com and so on. But what is it? How does it work? And how can you make money as an affiliate? I'm Gino Prusakov. I was lucky enough to get involved in affiliate marketing at its early days. Today, five books, multiple conference presentations, and success stories later, I'm here with you to help you make sense of affiliate marketing in simple terms, in plain language. Now, let's get started with this Affiliate Marketing 101 workshop. Called different names, performance marketing, CPA marketing, associate programs marketing, affiliate marketing is actually a pretty simple concept. And instead of giving you a dry definition, let me give you an example. Let's suppose I have an apple I'd like to sell. And you have the audience that is interested in apples. If you help me sell my apples, I pay you a commission. Simple, right? This is precisely the substance of affiliate marketing. It is leveraging your skills, connections, influence or authority to promote other people's businesses or products or services. Now let's imagine that in my example, the apple wasn't a fruit, but the company, Apple. And now we're talking a real world example of affiliate marketing at action. Apple, the company, does have its affiliate programs, one for iTunes, for um, digital or, or mobile products, and one for its physical products, for the Apple Store, iPhones, uh, tablets, and so on. They do pay commission to affiliates that refer sales to them, and this is really what affiliate marketing is. The beauty is that you, as an affiliate, don't have to carry stock, you don't have to process payments, you don't have to handle post-purchase customer service either. You just refer the prospect to the merchant, the merchant processes the sale and services that customer, and you get your commission. Now, in 2015, TechCrunch published an article entitled um, The Battle is for the Customer Interface. And in it, they wrote, or the author wrote, Uber, the world's largest taxi company, owns no vehicles. Alibaba, the most valuable retailer, has no inventory. And Airbnb, the world's largest accommodation provider, owns no real estate. And then they talked about the shift in um, consumer interface, but this was in 2015, remember? When I read this, I thought, man, affiliates have been doing this since 1994, carrying um, no inventory selling products, having no vehicles selling limo rides, and owning no real estate selling bookings uh, and um, uh, accommodation um, uh, at villas and uh, uh, hotels. I'd like to wrap this section of the workshop with my favorite definition of affiliate marketing, which was given by a colleague of mine, a fellow affiliate program manager, Chris Sanderson, who once defined it as the art of doing a merchant's marketing better than they can and profiting from it. This is precisely what affiliate marketing is about. Of course you wonder, what do others make or earn as affiliates? And I always like to rely on statistics, on surveys. The last AFSTAT report, um, a report that is based on a survey of over a thousand of affiliates, um, one run by Affiliate Summit, revealed um, that in response to their question of annual affiliate earnings, while 48% reported their earnings being under 
16% said that they earn between $20,000 and $40,000 a year. About 5% between $40,000 and $75,000. And more than 3% earn between 75 k and 100 k And close to 7% more than $100,000 every year. Keep in mind that about 17% chose not to answer this question. So it would be fair to assume if we um, analyze these that about half of the surveyed affiliates make around $1,000 a month, give or take. About one-fifth makes anywhere between $2,000 and $6,000 a month. And about one-tenth um, really makes about $1,500 every single week. This corresponds to what Darren Rouse, um, uh, also known as ProBlogger, um, once quoted in his The Ultimate Guide to Making Money with the Amazon Affiliate Program. Do check it out. He described his 10-year journey, and it took him a good 3-4 years to break that 20k a year record. But then, in his years 8, 9, and 10, he actually was well north of $80,000 a year. And that's just from one affiliate program, from Amazon's affiliate program. Um, they also call it Amazon Associates program. Now, yes, Amazon is a tremendously large and powerful uh, retailer in the US um, that owns uh, pretty much every third dollar spent online. But there are many more. There are many other programs that you could leverage on top of Amazon as well. All of this also roughly corresponds to what we are seeing in the affiliate programs that we manage as an agency. Uh, we do see most affiliates when they just um, start out, starting um, slow and modest, but I personally did witness affiliates reaching a um, median US salary um, made in a month during uh, seasonal um, stretches like the Halloween or Christmas um, or um, Black Friday, um, Cyber Monday periods. Also, let's remember such examples as um, that of the points guy, uh, Brian Kelly, who started his thepointsguy.com travel blog in 2010, um, then started monetizing it in 2011 through affiliate marketing, um, primarily marketing credit card offers and um, some travel related offers and getting paid a commission on every conversion or every, every lead he would refer um, to those um, uh, merchants or advertisers. And then, he, so he started in 2010, started monetizing through affiliate marketing in 2011, and in 2012 he was already acquired by Bankrate kept growing, and then a few years later, 2017 or thereabout, he got acquired as a part of Bankrate um, by Red Ventures. And on top of that, the, some of the most inspiring examples are those of um, such affiliate website as Ebates, online rebates or online cashback website acquired by Rakuten um, for $1 billion. And in late 2019, it was confirmed and announced that PayPal acquires Honey, also an affiliate, for a bargain price of $4 billion. How much does it cost, you wonder? That's a great question, and I have a great answer for you. It's 100% free. If any affiliate program at any time asks you for money to join the program, run away and don't look back. The catch is that you only get paid on performance basis, or only when that visitor that you referred to the merchant makes a purchase, and your commission is tied to how much that shopper spent with the merchant. I would be lying if I were saying that no investment is required. But initially, you can limit your investment just to the investment of your time and effort. And yes, with time, when you're ready for it, additional monetary investments would be helpful. Investing, them, um, investing the money into paid search, 
uh, and other activities to drive even more quality traffic or more traffic that you could refer to the merchants that you promote. Now let's talk about the key players. First, there is the merchant or the party that has the product and wants to sell. Secondly, there is the affiliate, sometimes also called publisher. It's the party that has access to the audiences that may be interested in the product of the former, of the merchant. And then there is the end consumer or shopper that both the merchant and the affiliate want to convert into a buyer. And fourthly, there is the tracking platform that ensures accurate tracking of all clicks and sales that happen in response to those sales. There is a fancy word um, that uh, is called attribution. Attribution shouldn't uh, scare you away. It's something, uh, it's just a smart word of ensuring that clicks converted into sales are tied to the right affiliate that referred the shoppers that uh, clicked through. So that's essentially how it works. And in the next section, we will look into um, the tracking platforms a bit deeper. Let's talk about tracking solutions for a moment. They come in various shapes and forms and are called different names. Sometimes you'd hear the word affiliate networks. Sometimes a tracking solution or tracking software. Sometimes you'll even see them come in the shape of uh, pure functionality supporting referral links within a proprietary software by this or that merchant. It really doesn't matter what they are called. All of these should provide for three fundamental pieces of um, any uh, affiliate tracking platform. For you as an affiliate, it's important that they provide you with tracking of the clicks that you refer to merchants and of the sales into which this, these clicks convert. Um, secondly, reporting on the traffic that you send or the clicks that you send to the merchant and the sales that occur as a result as well as maybe banner impressions if these are tracked. Um, there are solutions that track those as well. Um, the overall sales volume and the conversion rate or how many of the clicks that you referred actually converted into sales. And there are other um, uh, KPIs or key performance indicators that uh, these will report on and very frequently um, down to SKUs or individual products that were purchased. Um, so tracking, reporting, and then payments. On affiliate networks you'll be able to enjoy aggregated payments across various merchants. Uh, when you're working with individual merchants they will pay you uh, directly just on the sales that occur uh, on their platform or sales that you send to them. Now um, these three elements are important but it's also important to underscore once again it shouldn't cost you, the affiliate, a penny. It doesn't cost you anything. The merchants do pay for it, they have their own fees, but that's a separate story. I'll paint it in very simplistic terms for you, though in reality the situation is not fundamentally different. This is how it works. Initially, the shopper sees your mention of a product or a service or a brand. And then they click through, clicking on your affiliate link. At that moment, something very important happens. A small file called a cookie gets stored within their browser, the browser that they are using for their shopping. That cookie stores information about you, very generic information, just your um, unique affiliate identifier. This is necessary for that attribution that we talked about, to attribute a sale should it happen back to you. Then, after clicking on your link, they browse around the merchant's website, and if they buy, they reach the confirmation page or the thank you page. On that page, there is a small script which um, fires 
when the end consumer reaches that page and that script also called tracking pixel talks back to the system that is used to track and attribute affiliate transactions and tells the system that a specific click converted into a sale hence the commission is due to you as an affiliate there are cookie less tracking solutions out there but i won't complicate it too much for you especially so that uh, there's no fundamental difference it all serves the purpose of accurate tracking of click-throughs and sales and proper attribution to the right affiliates yes that favorite word of yours attribution now the fun part getting paid so there are three aspects that we should consider when we are talking about getting paid or about your payments the when the how and the how often when first of all there are payment thresholds pretty often pretty frequently so a, pay a payment threshold is essentially saying that unless this or that affiliate reaches twenty dollars the merchant won't pay them so you got to reach a certain amount before uh, bank transfer is made or however other they pay you secondly there's the timing element do they pay you weekly monthly provided that you met that payment threshold of there is one in place or is it a specific date um, every month say the 15th of every month the second element is the how or payment methods the most frequent ones are bank transfers be it ACH or uh, bank wires um, checks or sometimes PayPal or Payoneer or another method and finally the how often piece so you could be paid um, one time um, on uh, the customer that you refer you could be paid multiple times within the life of the cookie that we talked about earlier so as long as that cookie is on the end user's machine um, it's often limited by uh, time you get paid commission on that customer and then there is the most beautiful one forever or residual payouts so you essentially get paid in perpetuity every time the shopper that you referred to the merchant shops with the merchant we've covered quite a bit already so before we move on let me emphasize the five core principles of affiliate marketing for you as an affiliate first of all it's performance based marketing you get paid every time the performance that's desired by the merchant occurs be it a sale or a lead that's referred to them however that affiliate program is structured secondly it's a referral arrangement you are not responsible for customer service or taking payments or tracking shippings or returns then there is the universality piece um, which means you're not confined to any one marketing channel you can promote the merchant in whatever permissible ways um, you can fourthly and very importantly it's always free for you as an affiliate no affiliate programs should cost you anything to join and finally it's about a long-term relationship not about a one-time product placement or a one-time uh, mention in a tweet but about ongoing relationship which is hopefully being motivated by the merchants that you work with and they help you synchronize your efforts with their own marketing efforts keeping you informed and hopefully there is some sort of perpetual uh, remuneration be it recurring commissions or bonuses or tiered commission structures that encourage you to perform more on a continuous basis from global trust and advertising report by Nielsen we know that 83 percent of consumers trust recommendations of people they know beyond all other forms of advertising that's why and how uh, such marketing uh, directions as advocacy marketing and influencer marketing um, uh, emerged and started flourishing and there's nothing wrong in monetizing your influence if you've got a loyal blog following or social media following 
and you do have products or services um, that can help them and that can be of value to them, why not promote them to them? Now, do promote only the products um, that you yourself believe in, uh, that um, are really good in your opinion. It's important, otherwise it may jeopardize um, your relationship with your followers and your integrity. Um, as we are talking about um, monetizing influence, um, it's important to also emphasize the necessity to disclose your relationship with merchants. In the eyes of the Federal Trade Commission, you, the affiliate, um, are viewed as the endorser and the merchant is viewed as a sponsor. So you should be, you're expected to disclose that you're being paid um, should a commission be credited to you, should a sale convert, um, and there's nothing wrong about disclosing that. Um, it typically, honesty like that does not affect um, your follower's decision. In no particular order, and by no means implying that there are only these ways to promote products or services, I'd like to give you seven to get your creative juices flowing. Number one, textual content, blog posts, articles, um, short form textual content. Number two, visual content, um, always very engaging because we hear that our brain processes uh, data some 60,000 times faster when the data is represented in a visual form versus pure textual form. Um, so infographics, uh, interactive graphics, and um, um, slideshows, do employ those. Then of course, there's uh, thirdly, video. Now it could very well be bundled up uh, into the visual content um, a sec a section, but I do want to single it out. It's just an animal of its own and it's a tremendously effective one. Be it unboxing videos or um, review or type videos, we know from data, marketing data, that um, ads that contain a video actually have a dwell rate that's twofold the dwell rate of non-video ads. Uh, tremendously engaging. And then beyond that, if you're a savvy programmer, you may explore comparative shopping or importing merchant data feeds, their product data feeds into your website and providing for a comparative or comparison shopping environment. And then fifthly, any sort of cross-promotion or upselling, um, if you're already selling something that's related to what you could be selling, by all means employ cross-promotion cross -promotion and upselling. And then sixthly, coupons and deals. I'm not a fan of pure couponing, but it would be foolish to um, ignore the demand. Um, there are frugal shoppers, there are uh, deal-seeking consumers, so do look towards coupons, especially when combined with the aforementioned methods, especially text. It could be a, a coupon could be a tremendous conversion booster. And seventhly, loyalty, or um, providing an additional incentive to shop eat cashback, virtual points, um, miles, um, that's a whole segment of its own and, and it's, a, it's a very well working promotional method. There are many more, often more sophisticated ways to market merchants and brands and products and services. Uh, to consider the ones I've mentioned, but also look around. I have a lot more published in my blog, over 1,500 articles. I have many free videos on YouTube um, that will hopefully help you. What if you don't have a website or aren't yet comfortable building one? Are you doomed? Is affiliate marketing hot for you? Alas, let me give you five ideas on how you could still be an affiliate marketer without a website. Again, the arsenal shouldn't be limited just to these, but let me give you five. Number one, social media. Remember how we talked about monetizing influence? So leverage your social media clout wherever you have loyal followers, be it Twitter or Pinterest or Facebook or Instagram. Uh, provided that the platform's rule allow for it, do promote through affiliate links. 
the things, the products that will be of relevance and will be appreciated by your audience. Do remember to disclose, like we talked earlier. Secondly, email. Be it just a fairly modest email list of your previous customers or your uh, loyal blog readers or a full-blown email list of opt-in um, users or subscribers uh, segmented by verticals. It doesn't really matter which one of those. You can still leverage email successfully without a website. It yields tremendous engagement uh, rates. Thirdly, mobile. Um, we know that at least half of affiliate touches happen on mobile. Do look towards SMS or text messages and then branch over uh, onto other uh, mobile related areas such as uh, mobile web related ones like uh, mobile landing pages, in-app advertising uh, and other opportunities. Mobile is powerful. Now, um, fourthly, paid search. It's a little more intricate and do ensure that the affiliate programs rule uh, or rules allow for it. But if they do, do explore um, leveraging uh, paid search on uh, search engines, paid ads on Facebook and in other places. Um, they will help you touch the right customers, but do educate yourself well before you spend money there. And fifthly, offline couponing. Many tracking platforms will actually uh, track coupons just like affiliate clicks, attributing the conversion to the referring affiliate. Uh, there are many more. Do search the web. I spoke at many conferences. I have a lot of free videos on these topics too, uh, right there on YouTube. As we are nearing the end of this workshop, I'd like to warn you about failure. In the past 20 or some years, I have seen many affiliates succeed, but I did witness quite a few fail. And as I've been analyzing the potential or possible reasons why um, affiliates fail, I was able to pinpoint five reasons. I'd like to present these to you by, word of, uh, by way of warning. First, not devoting enough time to thorough education. If you're familiar with paid search, similarly there, if you're not spending your money in an educated way, driving targeted traffic, there are big um, chances of you sinking the money down the toilet. Secondly, faking your passion or interest. It shows. And then underinvesting, underinvesting your uh, time, effort, and to your affiliate marketing initiatives. Fourthly, giving up too soon. We saw this happen just this past President's Day when a, an affiliate in a particular niche got really excited by all the President's Day's promos that were happening and hopped aboard the affiliate bandwagon only not to make a single sale. Quickly got discouraged, gave up. Fifthly, failing to diversify, be it between um, approaches or merchants, just putting all eggs in the same basket has never been a good idea. My advice, just flip those and A, self-educate on a continuous basis. B, focus on what you're truly passionate about. C, invest the time, the effort, when, it, when you're comfortable investing money, invest the money. And then fourthly, stay the course, stay persistent. And finally, diversify in niches and approaches and so on. Speaking of successes, let me give you a few real life examples of real people just like you and me turning to affiliate marketing and starting to make real money from it. There was this one case where we found a blog that was writing um, ethnical recipes and we found a match which was perfect for their audience. A, a merchant that was selling ethnic gifts turned to be a great partnership. Another real-life situation uh, happened when uh, we discovered um, that partnerships with chiropractors can be especially powerful um, in the mattress niche. 
this particular chiropractor tried a few mattresses, liked some, started promoting um, the ones that he especially liked for specific reasons and became a pretty good affiliate for us, for some of the merchants whose programs we manage. Then we managed a an affiliate program for a merchant in the cos cosmetics niche and a social media influencer had the right audience, turned out to be a great match. Then a travel vlogger who was shooting videos um, on travel became a great partner for a travel insurance client of mine whose program we manage. And I know that they are pretty successfully also promoting this particular blogger is or vlogger, video blogger, promoting uh, travel aggregators or flight aggregators. There are many, many others uh, and you could be one of these successful affiliates. Just remember three things. Keep on learning in a dynamic industry, such dynamic and such fast pacing as affiliate marketing, you cannot afford um, to just stop learning and rest on laurels. Secondly, do not be afraid to experiment. And finally, persist, stay the course. With this, I wish you luck, the best of luck in becoming a great affiliate for those merchants with whom you will partner. Keep on educating yourself and keep pressing on.